Oriental legends claim they began as simple sheep herders on the continent of Essos. The Valyrian people eventually discovered dragons living near a chain of volcanoes they called the Fourteen Flames. After mastering the magical arts and learning to bond with these dragons, their people founded the Valyrian Freehold, ruled by 40 of their wealthiest and most influential families. Born into a minor faction within the aristocratic elite, the young maiden, Daenys the Dreamer of House Targaryen, was known to possess a unique talent for prophetic visions, which in 114 BC led her to foresee a great tragedy set to destroy the Valyrian Peninsula. Trusting his daughter, Enar Targaryen, the patriarch of their family, sold their properties in order to move their people, slaves, and dragons to the far western island of Dragonstone, where they became the sole ruling family to survive the Doom of Valyria, which struck the peninsula 12 years later in 102 BC. Having conquered nearly the entire continent west of the Bone Mountain, the fall of Valyria led to a century of blood where newly independent city-states vied for supremacy while Dothraki horse lords ravaged central Essos. Yet thanks to the efforts of Daenys the Dreamer, House Targaryen thrived on Dragonstone, possessing some of the last dragons and dragon eggs to escape the doom. Joined by their allies in House Valerion of Driftmark and House Celtigar of Claw Isle, they grew their influence and power by controlling trade in the Narrow Sea. Continuing to follow the traditions of the Valyrian people, Daenys the Dreamer married her brother Gaemon the Glorious, who after the death of their father Anar, succeeded as Lord of Dragonstone. Producing three children, their eldest son Aegon Targaryen married his sister Elena, while their youngest daughter was wed to a petty lord. This lineage continued for several generations until their descendants conquered the continent of Westeros, where they reigned for nearly 300 years. After a century of rule on Dragonstone, Aegon Targaryen set his eyes upon Westeros, sending letters to the rulers of the continent's seven independent kingdoms, demanding their surrender. Invading in 2 BC, Aegon and his sister wives successfully conquered six of the seven kingdoms, but were unable to subdue Dorne under the rule of Princess Maria Martell, an elderly, stubborn, and proud woman who initially informed the Dragon Lords they were willing to ally and fight their traditional enemies in the Stormlands, but were entirely unwilling to consider surrender. Sending his sister wife Rhaeny south atop her dragon Meraxis during the War of Conquest, they soon found all Dornish castles and towns largely abandoned, populated with only women and children. When Rhaenys arrived in their capital of Sunspear, it too was without defenders or nobles, save for Maria Martell, who issued a warning that Dorne would never submit, saying, You may burn us, my lady, but you will not bend us, break us, or make us bow. This is Dorne. You are not wanted here. Return at your peril. Following this confrontation, the Targaryens temporarily abandoned their Dornish campaign to instead focus on conquering the other six realms of the continent, after which Aegon was crowned King of Westeros in 1 AC. Ready to concentrate all their efforts on defeating Dorne and completing their conquest, House Targaryen began the First Dornish War in 4 AC, with Queen Rhaenys Targaryen once again leading the charge, flying her dragon south to take several castles, burn Planky Town, and capture the seat of House Martell in Sunspear. But once again, Aegon, Rhaenys, and their armies found Dornish castles abandoned, with the warriors of the realm retreating into the mountains to fight a guerrilla war, launching surprise hit-and-run attacks against enemy forces, while using the harsh terrain and scorching desert heat to their advantage. Initially finding little to no opposition, House Targaryen captured the empty castles and declared victory, leaving Lord Rosby in charge with a sizable host to quell any potential rebellion. Yet once the Targaryens withdrew from the region, the Dornish immediately began their counteroffensive, with Maria Martell re-emerging to take back her seat of power in Sunspear, capturing Lord Rosby and tossing him from the Spear Tower. All throughout the Dornish realm, nobility and common folk alike rose in rebellion, slaughtering the Targaryen garrisons and overseers left behind. 
having lost their Dornish holdings. The Targaryens retaliated by mounting their dragons and burning a great number of castles. Yet this only escalated the conflict further, seeing the armies of the Southern Realm strike back with attacks against the Stormlands and Reach. The vicious fighting continued on for years, reaching its height in 10 AC when Dorne used scorpions to shoot down Queen Rhaenys and her dragon Meraxxus, presumably killing both. Although the loss of his beloved sister wife led Aegon to burn nearly every enemy stronghold possible, the Dornish remained loyal to House Martell and would not yield. The war then continued on for three more years until the death of Princess Maria Martell, who was succeeded by her son, Prince Nymor, who sent a mysterious letter to Aegon in King's Landing. Although the contents of the letter remain unknown, some believed it revealed Queen Rhaenys was still alive and being kept as a prisoner under torture. Therefore, the letter may have offered to end her suffering in exchange for a cessation of hostilities. In any case, Aegon burned the letter after reading it and the next morning accepted defeat, ordering a complete withdrawal from Dorne. Though peace was at last achieved by Nymor Martell, there is little doubt it was the unshakable will of his mother, Maria, the Yellow Toad of Dorne, which set the stage for such a resolution, as she unrepentantly spent the final decade of her life engaged in a brutal war of attrition against the far more powerful and numerous armies of the Six Kingdoms, thereby cementing her reputation as the embodiment of House Martell's words, unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Born to Lord Mark Farman of Fair Isle, Alyssa Farman was a sharp and tenacious woman so in love with the sea that by the age of 14 she was sailing around their island home and by 20 was making the journey from Bear Island in the north to the arbor in the south. Rumored to be the lover of Reyna Targaryen, sister to King Jaehaerys, some believe the queen in the west only married Alyssa's brother, Andro, as a pretense to spend more time with the woman she loved. Living upon Fair Isle as a guest of Lord Mark Farman, Reyna was sent away after his passing in 50 AC and so was joined by Andro and Alyssa, journeying around the Westerlands for a time, until her brother the King gave her Dragonstone as a permanent residence. Now known as the Queen in the East, Alyssa Farman continued on as Reyna's close companion, even befriending her daughter Arya. Yet as the years went on, Alyssa grew increasingly unhappy with her situation, desiring to build a ship and fulfill her lifelong ambition of sailing across the Sunset Sea. Having left Fair Isle against the wishes of her older brother who inherited lordship from their father, she was denied any income from her homeland and so petitioned funds from Reyna Targaryen in order to finance her venture. Unfortunately for Alyssa, she was denied by the Queen in the East, leading to a rift which ultimately ended their friendship and any possible relationship between them. Eventually, Alyssa was granted permission to leave Dragonstone in 54 AC, but rather than depart on good terms, she stole three Targaryen dragon eggs before skulking off in the night. Furious at this betrayal, Reyna conducted a great search, but Alyssa was never found as she changed her name to Alice Westhill before making her way to the Free Cities, where she sold the dragon eggs to the Sea Lord of Bravos, at last acquiring the funds necessary to commission a great Carrick she named Sun Chaser. Sailing to Old Town in 56 AC, Alyssa assembled a crew, generating so much interest in her voyage west, she was soon joined by Sir Eustace Hightower aboard the Lady Meredith and his brother Norman Hightower on the Autumn Moon. When word spread about Alice Westhill recruiting in Old Town, Reyna suspected it was her old friend and so the order was issued for her capture. Though Lord Hightower claimed he was unable to catch their ships, some believe he deliberately slowed their response to safeguard his grandsons who were sailing with the wanted criminal. Beginning their great journey across the Sunset Sea, Alyssa Farman led their ships west, where they were eventually caught in a storm which sunk the Autumn Moon and damaged Lady Meredith, which had to be towed by Sun Chaser. Fortunately, they soon came upon three islands they named Aegon, Rhaenys, and Visenya, where they rested for a time. Seeing little hope for the venture, Sir Eustace and the Lady Meredith headed back to Old Town, arriving in 59 AC, while Alyssa and the Sun Chaser continued on, never to be heard from again. 
However, several years later, when the sea snake, Captain Corlys Valerion, underwent his famous voyages into the east, a curious tale emerged from his journey to the faraway city of Ashai, on the edge of the known world where he saw an old ship, ragged and beaten, but of a familiar design, which he believed was the Sun Chaser, suggesting that perhaps, somehow, Alyssa accomplished her goal of sailing across the Sunset Sea to end her journey in the lands of Essos. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Rene the Demigod, Ranyas Senestella, Daedri Dragonswit, and Lady J Booknerd. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and check out the links below, or visit patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.